Hi, how are you? I call this uh, public caucus to order. Tonight we are here to discuss um, the Alexander's um, Salon and Day Spa Loan. We have uh, Dan McCormick with us, accountant for uh, Alexander's. Attorney Paul LaBelle, uh, legal counsel for Alexander's. Um, Sherry Lynn Tarapchak, owner of Alexander's. Attorney Mike O'Brien, OECD solicitor. Linda Abley, executive director of OECD. And Mary Maroon, director of finance and compliance for OECD. And we're very pleased uh, to have you all here tonight. Uh, since uh, Councilman Rogan is uh, the chairperson for OECD, uh, I would like to uh, start by having him uh, ask questions that he has regarding this piece of legislation. Thank you, Mr. Joyce. And I do have a number of questions, both on two issues, actually. One, one which many people were disturbed about, which was the process, which I think should be viewed completely separately from the issue of the loan and the business. Um, but I would first like to turn it over to, to our guests if they have any comments that they would like to make before um, I begin my questions. Uh, I'm sorry, I should have actually done that. No, but not a problem. Go right ahead. Do you mean the public? No. Okay. You, you <laughs> no, we, we knew. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, uh, I have a couple of comment, comments, um, Councilman Rogan, and I think uh, Probably after I speak, uh, Attorney LaBelle may have some, and, and these guys might want to uh, 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 pitch in as well. Uh, the, you know, the main comment is, and I was, when, when the council meeting took place that, uh, uh, in which there were some questions raised about this loan and the process by which it came to council, I was actually on active duty with the Army. So I'm not 100% sure of exactly what was discussed at that meeting, but I have a general idea. And if there's anything that you want to add in, you know, feel free to jump in with any comments or anything like that. Okay. Uh, uh, my understanding is that the concern is that there was an agreement uh, put into place between the city of Scranton, represented by the Office of Economic Community Development, and uh, Alexander Salon and Day Spa. Um, if that were the case, uh, you know, th that would be something that you guys would, would probably be annoyed about, and I can, and I can understand that. Uh, in, in this case, that, that wasn't the case. Uh, what happened in this case was that uh, Alexander's is a, a strong economic driving force in the community. It's located on Lackawanna Avenue. I think Ms. Trapjack presently has, uh, I want to say, 56 employees, uh, 61. 61 employees in the city of Scranton. I want to say 36 are full-time, 38 are full-time, excuse me. Um, and so this is something, you know, this is really is a successful project that the Office of, Office of Economic and Community Development has invested in uh, with, with funds uh, given to us by the state and federal government. So we wanted it to succeed. Uh, as a result of the downturn in the economy and things like that, as you guys are aware, uh, there was some question as to whether or not we could restructure the loan payment. Uh, it was never agreed upon prior to this coming before council. In fact, you know, uh, the most recent uh, correspondence between our office and Alexander's is uh, this July 23rd letter uh, between Mary Maroon, uh, who is uh, a director of finance and compliance at the Office of Econo uh, Economic Community Development, uh, to Attorney LaBelle, who represents Ms. Trapjack. And I would, uh, we, can, we can give counsel a copy of this, but I would point to the very last sentence, which is not only included in the letter, but it's highlighted in bold. And it says, this loan modification is tentative as the modification must be approved by Scranton City Council. I would also refer back to any of the numerous uh, correspondence between the parties at this table. All of them include reference to the fact that, you know, the terms, the modifications that we're discussing are subject to council approval. Uh, and so there was never an agreement put into place and signed off on by anybody uh, prior to council's approval. Um, and, uh, uh, and in fact, when I came to this office as solicitor in August, this was the negotiations were just about finalized. And I think we submitted it to council's approval in September of this year. Uh, and, and so I can understand where council had some questions and council had some concerns as to the process. But if you, uh, if you do look back at the record, uh, there, was never a there was never any agreement 
Uh, there was never any uh, modifications put in stone or anything like that. There were negotiations between the parties as to essentially what is a refinancing of the loan that's gone from OECD to uh, uh, Ms. Trapjack. But uh, those negotiations were always conducted with both parties well aware uh, of this idea that it was ultimately going to be subject to council approval. And that's the reason why when we, when we did, uh, myself and Mr. LaBelle agreed on terms, why we uh, put forward a resolution asking to amend the original loan agreement. And that's why included with that resolution was the modified loan agreement. So if anybody wants to jump in on that, I think. Paul, do you have anything to add? Or? I would, <laughs> with regard to the first issue, Mr. Rogan, as to the procedure, I, I believe, uh, and, and I can uh, state on behalf of Alexander's that it was always uh, Ms. Trapchak's understanding, it was always my understanding that uh, any modification was subject to approval of council. And I would also say that until there was an agreement or an understanding as to what the potential terms would be, we refrain from memorializing anything or coming to council to ask for that approval. But uh, as Attorney O'Brien said, as, as soon as we did reach an understanding as to what we believed were fair and, and reasonable terms in light of all uh, the, the uh, benefits that uh, Alexander's provided to the community in light of the fact that uh, this agreement was entered into in 2007, the original loan, um, and in 2008 the economy pretty much has gone into the tank and has been slowly recovering. And in light of the fact that this originally was intended to be a, a, a grant, which did not require repayment, but uh, it was uh, renegotiated into a loan. In light of all those facts, we were able to come to what we felt to be a, a fair and equitable understanding. And it was only at that point that we presented that, we put that in the, the form of a, a resolution and we presented it, I believe it was presented either in September or early October, uh, if my memory serves me correct of this year. But prior to that, there, there was no, uh, no agreement cast in stone, and there was always an understanding that council had the final say. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll, I'm going to first address the process, and then we'll get on to the, the merits of the loan, which in my eyes are, are very important and must be looked at separately, because I, I, I am critical of the process uh, and how we got here. But at the same time, I, I do believe that we need to, to help our businesses in the city any way we can. Um, first, Ms. Abley. Um, and when we, our email correspondence, and I appreciate you getting me in touch with Attorney O'Brien to discuss the issues a little bit um, last week. Um, everyone's saying that no modification has been made, and legally that's true. It would be City Council that would legally have to make the modification. But the terms of this modification in practice have been true over the last 16 months in payment. Is that correct? Go ahead. Could, could I? Could I? I, I'm sorry, can I address that for a second? Sure. Um, it, it, just on behalf of Alexander's, uh, Ms. Trapcheck has always uh, strived to uh, be a good citizen of the city of Scranton and a good uh, business person and a good member of the community. And to address that, while there was ongoing negotiations, and, and I'm sorry, to, to Linda, to interrupt, but she was making a, a good faith payment based on her ability to repay mm -hmm. at that time. Again, there was, you know, it just it really wasn't a, an agreement. I mean, that 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 anybody was bound by. Yeah. Okay. And, and I apologize for interrupting. But. No, that's that's fine. Ms. Abley, do you care okay. to answer as well? And, and, oh, do you want me to ask you? You got it. You go ahead. Uh, uh, it, it, what you pointed out, uh, Mr. Rogan, is, is true in that in practice, the payments under, uh, uh, under the loan agreement have increased over the past 16 months. That's exactly true. Uh, or they've changed in the past 16 months. That's exactly true. They've increased. 
because prior to July of 12, the city of Scranton was receiving roughly $500 a month. Uh, after July of 2012, we were, we were receiving about $798 uh, a month. So it did, the, the payments did change, and you're exactly right, but they actually increased. Um, this, this, uh, uh, this modification, which is of course subject to council's approval, uh, it, it, it changes the terms of the agreement, but it increases the amount of money that the city of Scranton was actually, uh, is actually going to receive. Because the terms of the agreement, as Mr. LaBelle said, originally called for uh, a monthly payment of uh, $1,649.89. Now, Ms. Trapjack was only able to pay, uh, to, to the point of July 12, uh, from Alexander's, the city of Scranton was receiving $500 a month. And that's from 2007 to July of 2012. The city of Scranton is getting $500 a month from Alexander's. When we started the process of, and, 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 and uh, uh, I was not the attorney at the time, but I feel confident in addressing these issues. When this office started that process of renegotiating, that's when uh, uh, Ms. Trapjack started this good faith effort of, well, you know, if, if, these are the, if this is a term of about $800 that's going to go to, co go to council, I'll start paying it now. And that's why July 2012, as Mr. Rogan said, uh, the monthly payments did change, in fact, but uh, they actually increased to the city of Scranton. And, and, and I don't have as much of a problem with the, the renegotiation and, and the trying to help a business who's having a problem making their payments as that city council wasn't notified in, at any point during this process that the payments were initially, you know, from 07 to 2012, $500, and then they were, you know, and for the last 16 months were up to 700 some, some odd dollars. Ms. Abel, would you be agreeable to assuming you are part of the next mayor's administration and that's entirely up to him, um, of sending city council and, and the mayor's office, obviously, a monthly report specifically on loans, listing the name of every loan the city has, the amount of, that that loan payment should be, and the that's amount no that problem. was received. Yes, and Mary, when do, um Mary, can tell, do you update that every month? I will update it every yeah. month. And every month, City Council will be provided with a copy, and the public would also have access to, to those documents. Correct. Okay. Bye. And, and, in, and in fact, Mr. Rogan, if I could jump in, uh, earlier this week, myself and Mary uh, were, had a meeting, and we talked about, uh, you know, this is something we should give City Council so that they're not kind of caught off guard by any type of question, whether it's loans or whether it's the need to modify a loan or anything like that. Uh, that was something that I'm glad you raised that because Mary and myself talked about that this week and uh, it's not something that's gonna be difficult to prepare and I think that could be something, you know, you just give us the word when you'd like it and I think we can do that. Yeah, once, once monthly um, and, and that's what for me and, and when citizens question, well, well, Mr. Rogan, how didn't you know about this? Well, the answer is I'm not, the, I'm not in charge of receiving the actual checks. Um, but by getting that information on a monthly basis, I could track it and say, well, all right, well, this business XYZ, you know, their payments have been less than what's required. What's going on here? Is there a problem with the business? Is there something that the city could do to intervene? Um, and I think as a, as a legislative matter, I think we could get involved earlier in the process, and I think council should be involved earlier in the process um, in the future when, when this, and you know, we would, we would love if every loan that was made from the city, and I'm sure bankers would like the same thing, if every loan that was made, the payment stayed right on term, but we know in the real world that doesn't happen, things happen. And the thing that I know I was upset about, and I'm sure my colleagues were as well, is that we weren't notified at all during this process and m much of this was actually even prior to the three of us being on council um, when, when the original loan was 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 um, passed by city council and then when you know the, the economic problems in 2008 which is really what set a lot of businesses not only in Scranton behind so that that is something and I appreciate that that, that you can provide that to us to, to city council mm -hmm. Moving on to the merits of, of the legislation in front of us, and, and I think I would direct these to Mr. Uh, Attorney LaBelle. Um, the original legislation stated um, there are certain job creation requirements in the legislation. Could you speak to whether those have been, have been met? I, I certainly can. The original uh, loan agreement that was entered into uh, 
the paragraph four has hiring commitments, and it's that within three years they create at least eight new full-time equivalent uh, permanent positions. And uh, as Attorney O'Brien said before, at, at, and uh, Mr. McCormick, who's the accountant for Alexander's, the CPA, has verified this information that at, at the time there were, at the time of the loan, there were 19 uh, full-time equivalent positions. And how many Third. 19 full-time and 30 part-time. 19 full-time and 30 part-time. Today, I'm I'm proud proud to 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 say that there are uh, 38 full-time jobs. She okay. doub doubled the number of full-time jobs, and there's 23 23 part-time part -time jobs. Uh, so not only were eight the eight required created, but an, an additional 11, which uh, to me is astounding to be able to grow your, your business in these tough economic times and that that's all uh, the, those those people are all uh, you know working in Scranton spending their money in Scranton uh, so it, with regard to the question about employment the employment requirement was not only met it was far exceeded mm -hmm. great thank you and could you just give a brief explanation of what the, the, the loan funds were used for? And obviously the job creation has, has exceeded what the city was looking for. Right. The, the loan was a $250,000 loan. And because of the nature of the loan, it could only be used for the purchase of equipment. It couldn't be used for uh, remodeling. It couldn't be used for real estate. It couldn't be used for salaries. Uh, it was all used for equipment. Uh, I believe you're being provided with a list of that equipment now. And I can tell you this, that the $250,000 that was spent on that list of equipment was enhanced by about another thirty dollars or $40,000 that Mr. Elchak uh, personally uh, purchased, used to purchase additional equipment to go along with that. So not only did she take uh, the loan proceeds and use them to grow her business, but she, uh, infused her own personal capital in, into it. And I don't know uh, if uh, probably you gentlemen aren't very familiar with Alexander's. <laughs> but, well, our, uh, our girlfriends and wives, I'm sure, are. <laughs> but uh, Al Alexander's, uh, prior to this, started out on, on Linden Street, uh, a small storefront. Uh, later, it moved to the first floor of the building that it occupies now. And now, uh, I believe you have quite out three floors. There's services being provided, uh, spa and uh, different uh, activities being performed on three floors of that building with the 38 full-time and 23 uh, part-time employees. And uh, there's also a small cafe that was open on the first floor whose employees are not part of this count because they're not employees of Alexander's. So uh, I hope that answers your question about the equipment. A absolutely, and if my colleagues want to take a look as well. Thank you. And when, when this agreement was first sent down, you know, initially, my, my first reaction, I was very upset about not knowing about it, which is the process part, not the, the actual substance of the loan. Um, that being said, I, I do believe that the interest rate is is low, <laughs> uh, um, much lower than it should be. And I know when we spoke on the phone, Attorney uh, LaBelle, we, we talked about that there's, you know, that could be negotiated and, and also maybe a review period um, in seven, eight years, something along those lines. Um, that's something I would be willing to support and cast my vote for um, in, in agreement to help out a city business. Uh, but at the same time, without saying, well, we're going to give you a half percent interest for 20 years, regardless of, you know, what the economic conditions are over the next eight years. And my hope is that, you know, th this little bit of extra help and, you know, seven, if, if that's how it goes and seven years from now, the city council at the time, maybe it'll be me, maybe somebody else um, can revisit it. And I hope that you could come here and tell us that you have a second location and everything's doing great. And we can go back to the original terms of that loan. Um, so that's that's where I stand on it, and I, I do appreciate your openness. And, and over the last week and just two weeks, actually discussing these issues and 
hammering out a lot of it before we even got to this point at the, the public meeting. Um, that being said, as far as tonight goes, I, I think that original legislation should remain tabled um, until there's a, another, you know, more amicable agreement that, that could they could pass a vote by city council and, and my colleagues will see where everyone stands. Um, but I'm certainly open to, you know, working something out um, outside of this agreement, you know, like we, we spoke about on the phone. And I, I do appreciate you answering my, my core concerns, which were the job creation that was um, outlined in the loan and also where the money was spent, uh, the equipment purchases. And Ms. Abley, I thank you for coming and I look forward to those monthly reports. Um, so next time I get a question from the public or just from my own knowledge, um, I'll have it right in my folder and we'll be able to keep better track of these. And, and if, if there's other businesses that you know, we, we could work, work with in the future, it's definitely it's, it's why this office of community and economic development exists. So I, I thank everyone for coming in and, and answering our questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rogan. Councilman Loscom, do you have uh, any questions for our guests? Uh, yes, I just have a few. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming here this evening to answer our questions. Um, as my colleague, Mr. Rogan, said, I agree with a lot of what he said. And, you know, it was a little uh, unsettling to receive the legislation and think it had been done 16 months prior. Uh, that's been explained to a certain extent here. And I could certainly sympathize with Ms. Tarapchak because I, I too, am going through a similar process. Unfortunately, it's with the Bank of America, not OECD. So it's been a nightmare, to say the least. So I know how the economic situation is. Um, I appreciate the work you've done on that corner, uh, the hiring. I know it's not real easy to do business in the city. We've been trying to make it easier, and hopefully down the road it will be a little bit easier. Um, just a, a few questions in general about the process of, of, of how this is done. Um, apparently, when, when I had looked at the legislation, it's, it said that there will be $25,000 applied to the $250,000 loan. So in essence, $25,000 has been paid to date. Is that the that, proceeds? That, that's correct, that's correct. And the, 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 principal of the, the principal of the loan, which was $250,000, uh, is not in any way being adjusted in fact. Uh, the amended agreement is a loan for $225,000 simply because $25,000 has already been paid for the, to the principal. And so when we talk about the new terms, we're talking about uh, Ms. Trapjack has already paid $25,000. Okay, so basically, in 79 months, it amounts to approximately 15 full payments if we looked at the original agreement. Is that correct? I would have to, I would have to get my calculator on that, Mr. Lofton, sure. to see what 16, uh, 49, and 89 cents times 15 is. Sure. If, if you did it's, the it's math, I take your word yeah. for it. Yeah. What, what is our procedure for, I, I, again, uh, these loans that are that are falling behind do we have a procedure that we we notify right off the bat or do we have a can you tell me basically this is a, a multifaceted question not specifically to this business but how many businesses right now are in arrears and have anybody else requested a modification Mary would you have an idea yeah, yeah um, I would say approximately 24 to 28 loans have issues. Some have gone into bankruptcy. Some are behind in their payments. Some are not paying. Um, I have. I always have a list. Um, That's exactly uh, what I was. What I'm yeah. requesting. A few months ago, um, the loan agreements state that we we are not required to send monthly statements to them. That it's their responsibility to make their payments on their loans. But what I started doing, I call my monthly loan letter, and I, it's a, just a small letter that says, I have not received your loan payment this month in the amount of. Just so that I'm making them aware, you know, this is a monthly payment, and you should be paying it. Prior to this, I have sent out other letters stating you're behind in your loan, you're, you're in default. And how? I mean, once they go in default, according to the agreement, I think it was 10 days after a payment is due, right. we can notify them. Uh, are we aggressive on this or not? 
Is it, that, that's my question because, I mean, and not to single this business out again, but just using it as an example, you're saying 24 to 28 businesses. This revolving loan fund could be utilized to generate more business in this town. By the, the amount of payments that should have been made on this loan to this point, uh, there's $105,529 sitting on the table that could have been in the bank for another business. So if that's one business and we're looking at 24 to 28, you know, this is supposed to be economic development. We have the same problem now with collecting our garbage fees, our taxes. I mean, look at the position we're in. We're asked to help with this situation, but we're also on the line now to bail this city out of millions of dollars worth of debt. Again, this specifically has nothing to do with that, right. but it is a piece of that whole puzzle. That's the way I look at it, and that's the way the public looks at it. I think you're right in saying uh, uh, a number of things. And I think, uh, uh, but, but one of the things you said is, you know, this, this money is for economic development. Um, and so, uh, and this is, you know, the public in their wisdom, you are the elected officials and, and you ultimately make the decisions. Number one, uh, city council and the city council ultimately determines where this money goes in the first place. You know, o OECD, our office, provides city council with uh, the businesses who have applied and OECD uh, provides city council with the businesses that we believe should get uh, uh, state and federal money and OECD provides City Council with a, a list of what we think is an appropriate amount uh, for each business uh, but th this this legislative body makes those ultimate ultimate decisions as to where th this money goes now once the money leaves this building you know what happens on the street in terms of are those businesses able to succeed now as you said Mr. Laskam and you're exactly right you know economic times ec hard economic times and Ms. Rogan uh, alluded to this earlier, not just in the city of Scranton, it's across the entire country. So once this office, once the money leaves this building, whether those companies um, can uh, create jobs like Ms. Trapjack did uh, and expand like Ms. Trapjack did, uh, I think the economic reality is that many of them don't. And that's not only, and that's the reason why not only is the, is the Office of Economic Community Development having its hard time getting these loans back, but that's why so many uh, private banking houses are having a problem uh, in seeing their stock drop as the, una as the, unability, uh, the inability rather, of uh, businesses and individuals uh, to satisfy the terms of their, uh, of their original loan agreements. That's why it's so, uh, everybody's trying to refinance now because the rates are so low. Uh, uh, because the banks are willing to kind of renegotiate these rates with people so, so it's able, so, the, so people are able to uh, make the payments, make poor, more practical <coughs> payments in the current economic environment. So I, I don't disagree with anything you say, nor do I disagree with anything Mr. Rogan said. And I do think that's something that all of us are going to have to address in the future. And that's the question of uh, these businesses in the city of Scranton, who for not only the past four years or eight years or 12 years or 16 years have received OECD money. You know, there are many of them who are not doing well. And do we, uh, uh, do we want to see, in a case like this, for example, would it have been the correct move for the city of Scranton to, uh, 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 to, to move forward with litigation against Ms. Trapjack? Or would it have been a, a better move to do the course that council and the office are, are now doing, which is to renegotiate the terms of the agreement? Like Ms. Trapjack uh, said, 61 jobs, uh, a beautiful building on Lackawanna Avenue, three floors, um, and then as Mr. LaBelle indicated, another cafe in that building with jobs that, that don't go toward this count. Um, it, 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 I think in some cases litigation probably is going to be the answer, but that's something hopefully we can all work together and figure out as to uh, uh, what, what is the best way for the city to get the largest amount of funds back to do exactly what Mr. Loscombe said, and it's push it back out the door to other deserving businesses. Right. And, I, and I agree with you. I, I, I don't want you to misunderstand no, and I know, where I know. it's coming from. <clears throat> the last thing I want to do is see a business close down and spread. And we're here to help as much as we can. Yes, sir. We have to be a part of the process and a part of the solution to, to do this. And uh, we're more than happy to accommodate and, and work with any business. And, and like I said, I personally experience it, so I feel the pain. 
So I know exactly where you're coming from. It's just when, you know, when it appears things are done behind closed doors, and that, that was the impression that, that, that was thrown on us, um, and, and nothing against anyone here, but it does, it does sting a little bit. And if it's being done for one, is it being done for the other 24 to 28? I'd love to see them all benefit. I'd love to see them all help. And, and as you said, some of them may be beyond help. Um, and, and, you know, at that point, we may have to go to litigation or whatever. Right. But the more aggressive we are, uh, whether it's modifying the loans or whatever, it's going to free up more economic development money through, these, through this funding to, uh, to help other businesses, too. And that's my concern, that we just don't linger on and on and on uh, for years before we get to this point. Yes, sir. Yes. That's Mr. Lesman, if I, if I may, while, while I certainly understand your, your point and it's well taken, I, I'm a little uh, concerned that perhaps Ms. Trapjack's business is not the example of, an example of what you're concerned with. And I, and I just want to point out to council that in 2007, when this project was on the drawing board, there was a feasibility study done. If we put $250,000 into this building and buy this equipment, will we be able to re pay the loans associated with that? And, uh, you know, there's a mortgage on the property, so there's that to be considered. Uh, there's all the payroll, everything had to be, the numbers had to be run, okay? At that time, when this loan was first discussed it was discussed as a grant so you'll understand that there was no number plugged in for a repayment of a loan because it was a grant okay but then the terms <laughs> changed and Ms. Tarapchak honored the commitment and agreed at that point she's into this process has budgeted the money okay and now it changed from a grant to a loan a grant which doesn't have to be paid back to a loan which does and in addition the repayment terms originally said she didn't have to make a payment until three years after the date of closing correct that was okay? the voided agreement right. correct. and that was crossed out probably very close to the time she signed these documents because otherwise the documents would have been redrafted and it was changed to January 1st of 2008 so even if she went back to the drawing board, re-ran the numbers, had you know, her financial people pass off on everything. They were looking at payments starting three years down the road. So I think in this case, um, council should understand that the $500 payments that, that were made were the result of all the changes to this loan and, and the, the, to the grant and, and the loan process. So while there are some straight loans that are made and that people have run the numbers and say they can make the payments and those terms don't change i understand that you need to be aggressive but i think this is a hybrid situation unique uh to oecd and probably not very much like the other 24 or 26. uh so and, and even even if you started on january 1st of 2008 I, I understand the math that that you uh, that you went through, but I don't know if even that start date changes anything. But I just wanted council to be aware that when this whole thing was originally laid out on the drawing board, it was laid out as a grant, and there was all these machinations that occurred uh, subsequent to that, and and Ms. Trapjack had to think on her feet. She had to change the way. Uh, she budgeted her money and so it's certainly not any uh, disrespect to OECD that, that this isn't getting paid but this was certainly not a situation where she had an obligation she knew it from day one I, I hope you can appreciate that situation sure I, I had gone through the backup I saw the, the original voided contract and uh, did know some of those issues that you you would mention I don't know the history I wasn't here I don't know you know how it changed from a grant to a loan or, or what the procedure was at that point I don't even know how many grants we have out there 
Uh, I'd like to get up to date on a lot of this stuff. But the fact, what I was trying to bring out is this opens our eyes to some issues that, that you know, we have to work on together here. Uh, again, you know, we're, we're all for progress and we're trying to, you know, we hopefully can bring the business taxes down so it makes it easier for the business people, let alone the property taxes for our property owners. Um, there's no magic pill that we can, uh, we can provide to do that, but, uh, you know, we have to be open and, and all work together. And, uh, you know, I personally believe that there's a solution here. And um, just, uh, is the building owned by you too, Mr. Rabchak? And is there, there's a business in Wilkesbury with the same name. Is that your business also? Yes. Did that open around the same time too, or? No, that opened after 2009. 2009. Okay. I said I, I don't go. <laughs> uh, especially the economic conditions now. I have to have my daughter cut my hair, which is overdue. So what's left of it? <laughs> but, uh, but no, I. I you know, we have to ask some hard questions. We have to get to the bottom of, of some of this stuff. And, uh, you know, we're asked a lot of hard questions from this podium, and we have to have the answers. But, again, you know, the last thing I want to do is drive business from this city. I want to attract more business. I want to be more helpful. And hopefully, if we could get on track with these programs, we could be more helpful to other businesses, too. And don't ever hesitate to come to us, because that's what we're here for. But I think uh, at this point, that, that's all I have at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so I guess it's my turn. <laughs> uh, I wanna thank you all for coming tonight, uh, especially the folks from OECD and Alexander's. Uh, it's it's uh, very good that you um, came to speak with us to help clear some of our concerns. Now, I understand that we have a situation in, uh, in front of us where we want to, um, where we're eventually going to be voting on redoing the loan. So um, my question is um, basically, how is Alexander's doing? And I know that you're a private business and you don't have to share that information as far as how much the business is profiting or what your operating costs are and versus um, you know what you're bringing in. But I was wondering if you would be able to share some of that information with us, uh, either now or uh, via email or paper or however you have it. Uh, thanks for the question, Mr. Joyce. What I would suggest is that if council would like to provide us with uh, a letter or some information, uh, I can tell you this, that it, it at one and a half percent, which is a number we talked about, mm -hmm. it raised the loan payment to approximately $900, I believe. Correct. And uh, after talking with uh, Mr. McCormick and Ms. Trapcheck, uh, that's a number that they will be able to, uh, that Alexander's will be able to pay on a consistent basis uh, going forward. I don't know if that helps answer your question, uh, but if there's specific information that you're interested in, we, we, if you could put that request in writing, we would be glad to respond to it. I will. Um, basically, what I'm looking to um, get an idea of is, one, uh, what what can Alexander's afford to pay? That that's what I would be agreeable to. And if I see if the spa is profiting, uh, you know, a lot of money, uh, obviously I would say, oh well, they should be paying a higher, or their this loan should be at a higher, or should be close to the original interest rate. But obviously, if there's a struggle, then I would say that one and a half percent would be adequate if, if a business is you know falling under mr joyce i i don't want to chime in on your time but oh, i just oh, wanted to oh, address because oh, attorney labelle brought up the 1.5 percent i just wanted to give some background on how that kind of came to be okay um when this initially came up i reached out to um, attorney labelle to talk about this a little bit and you know i gave him some of my concerns mm -hmm. and again I, 
I, I keep stressing this that we have to separate the process from the actual loan and, and the business here and, and we talked about it a little bit and I, and I was completely honest that it that a half percent struck me as very low and you know it was explained that when the loan was initially issued it was about three percent under market which at that time, by looking, doing a little research, that seemed to be about what it was issued at. 1.5% um, now would be approximately that same 3% under market. Um, <coughs> average rates are around 4.5% now. So 1.5 is about 3% below. Um, as Attorney LaBelle mentioned, that would increase the monthly payment to the city from the original agreement. And um, we also discussed that instead of having a modification for the life of the loan, it would be for a set period of time, seven years, eight years, and then it would be revisited by um, OECD and city council and the mayor at that time. Um, obviously, that's not a firm agreement. I'm only one member of council, um, but it's just something just talking that, that we thought might be palatable to other members of council and to OECD, to the business. Um, so hopefully we will be able to reach some sort of agreement in the future, hopefully in this council, if not in the next council. Um, but I just wanted to explain how that number came out and how all that came to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, basically, the main thing that I'm interested in is seeing um, how the business is doing and what they could afford. Because obviously uh, we're looking at the possibility of lowering an interest rate. And um, in order for me to approve something like that, I would like to see that the business has a, has a need uh, to lower that interest rate. That they're not you know, profiting uh, a ton of money and saying, oh, well, give us a lower interest rate. So that, that's basically what I would like to see. It's a, I understand that, and uh, we, we will uh, see if we can provide you with something that, that may uh, answer your question. I, I think uh, the other thing that you need to know is that if Ms. Trapchak were able to, re, were to be repaying this on the shorter term, mm -hmm. then it would behoove her. So to... Uh, even though the interest rate may be lower and reducing the payment, it's going to take her potentially longer or leave her with a balloon payment at the end, yeah. which, you know, I mean, you guys are all smart people, business people. You, you understand that that's, mm -hmm. that that's not the end goal. The end goal is to get the loan paid off as fast as possible. Right. So you pay as little interest as possible. So, uh, I mean, we, we, we understand your, your concern, but, you know, I, I think you understand that scenario and that dynamic yes and and i do understand that it's uh, a tough business environment in the city uh and that you know in 2008 we did go through a recession and uh I, i'm very glad that alexander's has been successful uh, i'm glad that they're that they've created jobs in the city uh, because that that's obviously something that's much needed here and that's all I have. Um, if there's anyone else that has additional <coughs> questions or comments. No? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. very much. I call Thank this uh, public caucus adjourned. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection or silent prayer as we remember the servicemen and women who are stationed around the globe that continue 
every day to defend our freedom and our way of life. And also please remember all those who have passed in our community over the past week. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Hey. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third Order 3A, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held October 23rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Applications along with decisions rendered by the Zoning Hearing Board held on November 13, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, single tax audit and financial statements for the year ending December 31, 2011. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held November 20th. 2013. Are there any comments? Not received and filed. 3E, minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held October 23rd, 2013. Are there any comments? Not received and filed. 3F, audit status from Robert Rossi and Company received November 14th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Are there any clerk's notes, Mrs. Craig? No, Mr. Joyce. Do any council members have announcements? Yes, very briefly. Um, first, Mr. McGough did uh, message me earlier in the meeting. He won't be unable to attend. He's having a medical procedure. Um, two announcements. Um, the first one um, is benefit for Bobby. Bob Beck is a 63-year-old Scranton man diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in March of 2009. In October 2013, he was diagnosed with tonsil cancer. Before his illness, Bob worked at General Dynamics for many years. He is an amazing person who loves his family dearly. Mostly he loves helping others, music, fishing, and food. Uh, the, the organizer are looking for donations of all kinds, baskets, food, etc. To donate, you can call Kiera at 570-780-9270. And this event will be held on Sunday, December 1st, from 2 to 7 p.m. at the Kaiser Valley Community Center. Tickets are $10, and there will be live music by Grace's Downfall and DJ Ransom. Secondly, um, Buona Pizza, Giovanni Piccolino at Buona Pizza will be having a free Thanksgiving lunch. I know he's been having this for many years. This is on Thanksgiving Day from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Buona Pizza. And a big thank you to Giovanni for continuing to, uh, to give back to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Fine Councilman just, Rogan. Yes. Just, just briefly, I would like to uh, follow up on, on something I had asked for prayers for last week. My mother wishes to thank everyone for the many get well wishes she has received so far from so many kind and thoughtful people. She will, remem will remember you all and she's doing very well. Uh, maybe another week she'll be dancing, but hopefully. <laughs> um, and my brother also, my brother David, wishes to express his thank you for the many condolences he's received upon the death of his beautiful wife, Christine. And I thank you all. Thank you. I would just like to uh, reiterate, um, as uh, Mr. Rogan stated before, uh, Councilman McGough uh, will not be in attendance at tonight's meeting as he's having a medical procedure. I uh, hope that he does well and I hope that he has a speedy recovery. And in addition, uh, Councilwoman Evans is ill and will not be at tonight's meeting as well. So I hope that she is doing uh, better soon as well. And uh, Attorney Hughes will also not be in attendance at tonight's council meeting as he is ill as well. So I hope they all get better soon. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Faye Franis. 
Okay, Frannis Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I, I wanted to throw some questions out, not necessarily for you to answer, just to pose them out and, you know. Okay. Just so people are aware of things or try to think about these things. Since this budget, the mayor proposed this budget, he, he quite graciously invited Mayor-elect Gil Courtright to open door to come in and help him with the budget, to look at it, to go over it for any of his input. I can't understand how come no one's heard from Mr. Courtright. Like, why wouldn't he jump on this opportunity to have input in this budget? Does anybody even know what he thinks about this budget? Has anybody asked him? Has he contacted council? Has he contacted the mayor? I mean, I haven't, here's the newspaper right here. I look every day and I see no stories. Mr. Lockwood, I, I can't understand how come there's no stories on Mayor-elect Courtright as to his ideas on this budget. Why he doesn't contribute to it, why he doesn't convey his thoughts, what he thinks about it. He's the man that has to live with this budget. He's the one that has to work on this. He also has said many times publicly that he has a great relationship with council members now and council members to come in January. And he has a great relationship with the unions and he has a great relationship with the banks. Why are we not hearing his ideas on this budget? Why hasn't he even uttered a word about it? This should be an editorial, if nothing else. I think it's food for thought for the people to think about. He should not be not saying anything. He should have a direct input, especially since Mayor Doherty invited him in to look at it. And I hope he still has a couple weeks. Maybe he will. It will be very good if he does. Let's wait and see. Now, I want to talk about this garbage fee for a second. Okay. Uh, I don't know if people understand this or how this thing got created. But this, the garbage, when you put your garbage out, that was part of your taxes. What are we paying taxes for? For police protection, fire protection, and for a garbage pickup. That's the way it was. And when Jimmy Connors was the mayor, he had an arbitration with the firemen or something, and it, and it got messed up. It didn't work out. So they had this huge bill to pay. And they didn't know how to pay it. So they created a garbage fee. To me, that's double taxation. You're paying for your garbage through your taxes. Now they want to increase it $300 to $300. Senior citizens cannot afford it. Even nobody could afford it. And I don't think you should go to per bag, because people will be dumping their garbage in other people's houses. And Mr. Rogan, you mentioned once that if people don't pay for the garbage, it won't get picked up. Well, you can't do that either because of skunks and rats and you just can't leave garbage out in the street. I mean, you just can't. But to me, this is double taxation. You should never have a garbage fee to start with, let alone increase it to $300 and the taxes are out of sight. I mean, you're there to represent us, not to take care of Bill Courtright as the mayor or take care of the firemen and the policemen. You're there to take care of us. I haven't seen it yet. Mr. Rogan, I'm going to be looking very carefully to see how you vote for this budget. You, who have never said, who have always said, rather, I will not raise taxes. I will not raise taxes. I will take care of you. I'm looking out for you. We'll see. We'll see what you do with this budget. I'm watching you very closely. Uh, another thing, I was in Clark Summit last week, and I went to the State Street Grill. And on their meters, they had, if you're going to the State Street Grill, you do not have to pay for the meters. So I asked them about it inside, and they said that they pay, the State Street Grill owners pay the borough of Clark Summit the cost of the meters for the day, or every day. This encourages people to come to their restaurant, because they don't have to go and pay, worry about coming out and feeding the meters. I think some businesses in Scranton should consider that. They would get much more business if they themselves possibly did the same thing. And that the people that park in front of their business won't have to feed the meters. It's, it's food for thought. I know I'll go back there, because I think Clark Summit is, they're a step ahead of Scranton. They have the cars getting stopped for overweight, the trucks rather, for overweight trucks on State Street. They're getting tons of money. Scranton, nothing. $300 fine, never. Not one fine yet. So I just hope that you Think about the people and do what you can and start doing the job that you were elected to do, not taking care of special interests in certain people. And try to get rid of this garbage. It shouldn't even be a garbage fee. 
double taxation. And I hope Billy Courtright comes forward with his ideas on this budget. People want to know what he thinks. He's going to be the mayor. He has to live with this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Gerard Hutman. Good evening, Council. Good, good evening. evening. Gerard Hetman from Lackawanna County's Community Relations Department. Uh, it's good to see you all as always. Uh, to begin this evening, just to follow up on a question that Councilman Rogan had asked uh, my last appearance last month uh, regarding the possibility of Lackawanna County postponing uh, the first installment of the property tax payments for 2014. I have forwarded that request uh, to the County Commissioner's Office. However, I have not heard back from them specifically if they will uh, go ahead with that or if they won't do it. Um, but as soon as I do have an answer, I'll remind them about it this week. And as soon as they let me know what their plans are for that uh, process, I'll sure to be forwarded to Council's office as soon as they let me know. Uh, but I have requested information on it, and we will hopefully know soon, and we'll let Council know ASAP when they have a decision on that. Thank um, you. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank, Just thank you. you very much. No problem. Um, to get to a couple items uh, relating to the county and the holiday season coming up, the Lackawanna County Office of Youth and Family Services, formerly known and still known by many as the Office of Children and Youth Services, is conducting its annual Adopt an Angel program again this year. Uh, this is a program that allows the community to contribute uh, to help that office provide gifts for underprivileged children at this time of the year who otherwise would not face uh, a very happy holiday season uh, due to unfortunate circumstances. Children served by the Office of Family and Youth Services. Um, it allows people to contribute and it could be an individual, uh, could be your office at work, a community or church group, um, anybody, any way you want to slice it. Um, they just need to contact some volunteers that work with that office who coordinate the program. Uh, they suggest a minimum donation of $100 per child, uh, but there's no firm threshold as to what you have to contribute. Uh, but the volunteers work with whoever would like to participate in the program to match them with the child, um, a gender and, and an age that if they request one, they'll work to match you with that child and whoever participates in the program just donates some funds to provide gifts for those children. Um, it's very easy to do. Uh, they'll, the gifts will actually, if people want to purchase them, they can be dropped off at the Mall at Steamtown, and it's coordinated. I'd like to give you the name of the volunteer who does this. Uh, her name is Leah Doherty, and her email, I'll just spell it out really quick, is L-E-A-D-O-U-G-H-E-R-T-Y-M-S-W at gmail.com, and her phone number is area code 570 630 for 506. And again, this program helps many needy children, a lot of whom may be residents of our city and of the communities around us, uh, to enjoy a Merry Christmas season. Uh, so it's a great way to participate in community service and help those less fortunate at this time of the year. Um, second, just a couple of events that will come up in the holiday season. All of them like to hit that first weekend in December. Uh, Saturday, December 7th, the annual Lackawanna Heritage Valley Santa Train will have its last stop on its annual run down the valley at 2.45 p.m. At the, in downtown Scranton at the Scranton State Office Building parking lot on Lackawanna Avenue. The Santa Train has been a long-running program, but this is only the third year that it makes its last stop at the State Office Building parking lot. Previously, it would go down from Carbondale uh, through the Mid Valley, Valley View area, and it would just come back to Steamtown. But this is the third year that it actually stops, and it has a stop in downtown Scranton. I know we all like to see good, positive activity in the city, this is a good example. You can bring the children out, uh, meet Santa, get some photos with Santa, and different community groups chip in to provide refreshments and other entertainment at that stop. So it's a great afternoon in downtown Scranton. And actually coinciding with that, at this time of the year, everybody seems to ask me this, but uh, the annual county holiday tree lighting takes place this year, Friday, December 6th at 5 p.m. on Courthouse Square. Coincides with two events, the first one of which is the December 1st Friday, but also in addition to that, new this year, uh, Scranton Made, a local artist collective of small businesses and merchants and artists in and around the city of Scranton, together with the county's arts and culture department, are hosting Holiday on the Square. It's a festive, as described by them, festive outdoor winter market, uh, features a large number of crafters, merchants, artists, all selling their wares on Courthouse Square, and the, the hours of the market are 5 to 9 p.m., on Friday, December 6th, Saturday, December 7th, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's the same group that did the Arts on the Square Festival back during the summer months. Really similar to, if you've ever been to the Lehigh Valley, Chris Kindle Mart down in Bethlehem. Um, it's just that there's only one weekend. But it should be a great time. And again, we look forward to 
seeing these events grow and prosper in downtown Scranton, and hopefully uh, residents and visitors can enjoy them and see the best of our city has to offer. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and we will follow up with you on that issue as soon as we get an answer. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bill Jackowitz. Good evening, Scranton City Council. Bill Jackowitz, South Scranton resident, member of the Taxpayers Association. Good evening. Good evening. Scranton's budget might work. I feel your pain. I feel a lot better right now after saying those two statements, repeating those two quotes. 7,986 days ago, Scranton was declared a distressed city under Act 47. Reality, not fiction, inching closer to 8,000 days. $130 million budget for Scranton, ridiculous. Who's going to pay for it? Arbitration awards, what is the latest information on payments? We still haven't heard anything, it's been years now. Will the fair share tax law be fair and include everybody or just the out-of-state university students? Garbage fees, $300 a year. The city cannot collect $178 a year fee. What makes you think they will collect a $300 a year fee? Scranton population, 75,809 estimated. Persons 65 and over, 16.4% of the population. Property tax increases, 56.7%. Garbage fee increase, 68.5%. Parking fee increase, 25%. Rental registration tripling. Look out, renters, open up your wallet. You're going to get nailed big time. Per capita income, $19,681, 2010 census report. Medium household income, $36,968, 2010 census report. Persons living below the poverty level, 33%. Highest unemployment rate in the state for over four years, State Department of Labor. Food stamps used soar 75% in five years. Average salary in the United States grew by 6%. In Scranton, only 3.7%. Why? But yet Scranton wants to raise taxes, fees, with no cuts in city employees' salaries or layoffs. Mr. Doherty said, quote, I've always been a realist, end, end quote. You pay your bills and you move on. I am also a realist. I've said that many times from this podium. So Mr. Doherty, take out your checkbook and write the check to pay your bills you created along with city council members who voted for your ridiculous proposals throughout the years. The taxpayers are not responsible for this. The truth of the matter is 20 million plus gap deficit will not be closed, period. According to Mr. Doherty, everything in the 2004 is an assumption. Did we not just go through this in 2013? You know what happens when you assume. Another quote from Mr. Doherty, but if we're going to be able to borrow, borrow, if we're going to be able to do things 10 years from now, you need revenues to pay the bills. Really, Mr. Doherty? Mr. McGough, Mrs. Gatelli, Ms. Ms. Finucci, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Hazuri, Mr. McTiernan, and Mr. Polshis. Why did these council members approve the borrowing, which put the city into its current status? More importantly, why did these council members support fighting the police and fire unions, which led to this ridiculous $22 million award? Mr. Reap was correct. The only people making money are the attorneys. The Catholic Diocese of Scranton had the right idea. They appointed Bishop Martino as bishop, not from the area, no ties or relatives in the area. He closed the churches, schools, and everybody complained. Once he completed his job, he left the area, mission accomplished. Now, nobody complains. Why? Because it had to be done. I recommend to the dysfunctional Scranton government they do the same. Otherwise, the city remains distressed, period. As far as last week's comments about the 2013 budget being close to being balanced, should you not expect that considering we had several tax increases in the past five years? Of course we're going to have more money. We increase taxes. The taxpayers are being milked for more, period. Has anybody tried getting affordable health care insurance lately? 
FYI, for your information, there are three five-letter words that go hand in hand. Money, power, and greed. If you have money, you have power. If you have power, you have money. When you have both, that equates to greed. That's government right there. And to the Scranton firefighters and police officers, you know, the majority of you people are good people. You do a hell of a good job. You won your arbitration. And I applaud you for that. I support all firemen. I support all police officers. But in the same token, I, I'm asking you to please, please consider renegotiating this arbitration award. I know you were generous enough to give back $15 million, but your fellow residents of this city cannot afford it. I'm not asking you, I, I don't want you to give up everything, but I'm just asking you, please, for the benefit of the rest of the citizens of the city of Scranton, please at least think about it and consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker tonight is Bob Bolas. Good evening, Council Bob Bolas, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I sat through part of tonight's uh, caucus, I guess we would call it, regarding Alexander's. Let me tell you what I heard and what I didn't like and what I haven't liked in this city in a long, long time. Alexander's, from my understanding, was given a grant. That was changed to a loan, 1.5%. Then it was tried to change to 5%, and God knows where else. You know, when somebody comes in and they agree to do something, and this city agrees to do it, and you change it, that's called bait and switch. Let me bait you in and switch the deal. That was done with car dealers for many, many years. That's what we did in this city. I think if they were entitled to a grant, then it's this council's responsibility to live up to your word. You give them a grant, you give anybody else that you gave your word to. And that's what shows credibility and integrity, something we're lacking anymore. Don't ask a business that's actually brought a business here and is successful what they earn, what they make. You go to a salon, watch these people stand on their feet eight, ten hours a day, cutting hair, putting up with their big head, smiling faces and complaints and so on and so forth. Lackawanna Avenue is a ghost town. You spent millions of dollars to do what you did to Lackawanna Avenue. Go take a look at it. Montan's bailing out. What are you going to get here? Alexander's could go anywhere. They're in Wilkes-Barre. They go anywhere they want to be. She elected to be here. It's your responsibility to see that those that want to stay here and you made a deal with, don't change it. That's character, to stand up for what's right. This city spent millions of dollars, the Connell Building, the hotels, you gave it away. You took three and a half million dollars, my pet peeve, of the golf course money, with the councils before the administration and flushed it down the toilet and you got this for it in return. And now you want to penalize the business that's staying here making something happen? It's easy to get another vacant building. Where are we going here, guys? Let's pay attention. Live up to your word. Live up to your bond. You have to make corrections for the future. So be it. But don't tell somebody that's already been there to pay for the past. That's not their fault. You know, we're ready to get a tax increase by the state. Now we're going to get it in the city in the budget. Where the heck are we going? You're going to borrow to get out of debt? It's not going to happen. What do we get for our recyclables? Do we give them away to the recycling center or do we sell them? Has anybody got that answer? It's an answer I think we should get and you should look into. Put your recyclables off for sale to the highest bidder. You're dumping them into a privately owned recycling center that gets cheap labor from the prisons to go up there and work and puts millions of dollars in their pocket. It's time for us to look at making money out of our recyclables. Put them out. There's a lot of people who'll be glad to buy them. And if they want them, let them pay for them. They're getting a labor-free, literally, operation up there at our expenses. 
So those are things to do. Your garbage fee, $300. It's a damn joke, excuse the French. To a landfill up there that has pirated this city in every direction it could possibly go. There's a leachate line. Put $10 a gallon on it as a host community. Take what it takes to be what it takes to make this city whole again, instead of being bullied. You know, one time you gotta keep rocking across the street from a bully. One day you gotta stand up to him. And the time is now. There's a new council coming, a new mayor coming, but it's your responsibility to the day you guys leave here to try and clean the house up before you go. And you need to do that. The, the leachate, I mean, you know, it's just, the Naples has two garages in this city. Have they ever paid anything on them? I remember going back years and years. Have they ever paid anything? Yet you want to hand them more money? You can't even pay the garbage bills from the past. And now you want to hand more to the people? It's a taxation without representation. This is simply as it's put. If you could tax, or better yet, put a fee on the citizens of this city that you're already burying with everything else, then you could put a fee on nonprofits. It's another group of bullies. It's time. The time is now, not tomorrow or the day after. For them to pay to the piper. The free ride is over. They're a contributing factor to the debt of this city. You gotta make cuts. You can't just keep borrowing to get out of debt because that's proven a fallacy. You got awards coming, unions, everything else out here. Mm -mm. We have to get our heads out of the sand, gentlemen. And the time is now. If you don't do it now, it's never gonna happen. You've broken promises. We've squandered millions of dollars. We haven't made one single cut in this city. We've given our stadium away over there, Southside Center, gave it away, didn't get a dime, could have sold it for more money. I bought a church in this city to save it. Its value was $3. I paid 35000 to preserve our history. You know what they assessed me? A half a million bucks for it. So stop and think what we're paying to be in the city of Scranton, and those that should pay, aren't paying. This budget's a joke. It's gonna destroy this city. You're never gonna get it done, and you can't keep asking for more blood from the people out of this city. I think they bled enough. The chance and choices are now. You have a gas line going here, you have a leachate line. Why aren't you looking to possibly do a Marcella Shell drilling in this area? How much gas is under the city of Scranton? Has anybody thought about exploring it? What about windmills up on West Mountain? Sell the power, cut our expenses here, give the people a break. There's creativity, but nobody's creative. Let's just borrow millions of dollars. You can't even pay the interest on the millions you're gonna borrow. And now you wanna add the garbage fee? Come on, that's what our taxes are for, to pay for garbage. So it's time to really smell the roses, gentlemen. You're burying this city and this administration's going to take us to the grave before it goes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bolas. Thank you. Our next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Uh, Good evening. I, too, would like to uh, spend my uh, time tonight and address this budget. Uh, over the last uh, week or good week, I've had a chance to uh, take a look at this budget. Uh, I have a lot of concerns with this budget, uh, particularly the fees, uh, the increased fees that have been placed in this budget for next year. Uh, but before I get into that, I, I, I want to make it clear uh, in terms of the property tax increase of uh, roughly 57 percent. Coming here long enough and, and knowing full well the situation the city's in, particularly this last year, going back to last summer and all we dealt with with the recovery plan and trying to get ourselves in a situation this year um, where we can somehow float above water, I knew that a tax increase was inevitable. And so that doesn't come as a surprise to me. Um, I know we're in a situation where we pretty much have no choice in that end. And so I don't think there's much we can do with that. In fact, uh, I was actually surprised that it, uh, it uh, wasn't higher in terms of the mayor's uh, you know, suggested uh, amount. The concerns I have uh, 
are mainly uh, the revenue uh, projections and, and our inability to yet again be aggressive and go after um, revenue that's out there. Um, yet again, we seem to be laxed, and there's no sense of urgency whatsoever uh, by this administration. And I'm, I'm really upset that we haven't put our foot down and held, them, held their feet to the fire here. Um, I'm concerned that when I look at a budget and I see that through September 30th, the city's only generated $25,000 for an amusement tax. I believe Live Nation is the only organization to contribute towards that tax. My question tonight is, where's the rest of the money? Why hasn't the city aggressively pursued these organizations, other organizations, so that we get the money that we budgeted? That's a very important question. My other question is the uh, MBRO, market-based revenue opportunity. According to this budget through September 30th, not a dime has been brought in. I understand the process was delayed, so that's obviously a contributing factor, but what is the future of this? I mean, do we intend on this being successful, or is this just another, you know, pie in the sky, uh, you know, revenue enhancement? Um, I understand that when you put recovery plans together and you, you place revenue enhancements, I understand you're taking a chance and you're counting on things to happen that sometimes don't happen, but we knew we had to take a chance. But my concern is, is I, I don't think there's, we, we, we put things down, but we're not being aggressive in our pursuit to bring these things in and make them happen, make them a reality. It's nice to talk about it. It's nice to have it on paper, but we're not realizing it. And the contributing factor to that is we're nonchalant about everything. That's the philosophy of this administration for the last 12 years is we do not have an aggressive attitude and aggressive philosophy. And that's why the city is in the shape it's in, because we have a laid back, um, you know, attitude here. And until the attitude is adjusted, and I'm hoping that happens next year, we're just going to continue this the same course year year in and you know year out, and nothing's going to change. The other question I have is going back to this recovery plan. We spent all this time last summer going back and forth on a recovery plan and the recovery of this city for the next three years. Revenue enhancements. We discussed the commuter tax. You know, whether you're for the commuter tax or not is irrelevant to this discussion. My question tonight would be, we placed in a recovery plan to petition the court for the next three years a commuter tax. Why, why didn't we do that this year? The administration chose not to petition the court. So yet again, like 12 years ago, this is another recovery plan that we're just going to blatantly refuse to follow. Why did we put all that time and effort going back and forth through the whole summer? We had employees making minimum wage. We were a laughing stock all over the nation on national TV to put this plan together, and we don't even follow it. That's $2.5 million the next two years. Uh, let me move on here. Pilots, my biggest pet peeve. There has been, in the, in the last 12 years, there has been no aggressive pursuit other than a few members of this council that went and knocked on their door and you were accused of you know, all sorts of illegal activity, which was a joke. But there has been no aggressive pursuit by this administration with, these, with the nonprofits in this community. And again, I'm going to bring up the 1% tuition. I know people don't like to hear it, but that's where we are right now. And I know I talked about the idea that there was a lot of legality involved and a lot of back and forth and it wasn't something as easy as just putting in a budget. But you know, the more I think about it, if we had that aggressive attitude and that aggressive mindset and we truly cared and were really serious about turning this city around, we would have done all the legal research by now. This that could have been put in this budget. That's six to eight million dollars that the city could bring in annually. And that way we don't have to raise a garbage fee. That's my next uh, issue, this garbage fee. It's completely asinine. And I apologize for the language, but I, I am just so disappointed and, and discouraged and disgusted that the mayor had the audacity to even put that in the budget. Last week I've talked to numerous senior citizens, I'm going to use them as an example, who just told me that there, there's just no way they're going to be able to take that on. I mean, it's bad enough it's $178 now and we want to increase it roughly 69% at $300? Just months back we saw the names in the paper from the people over $7 million in delinquent garbage fees that the city didn't collect. You think people are going to pay $300? As we've said before, it's a taxation without representation. Speakers have said it before me tonight. It's why people pay property taxes. You pay for police protection, fire protection, and for your garbage to be collected each week. And, 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 and with, this, with this plan, I mean, we're really putting the screws of the people, and I, and I don't think it's right. Um, this, this can't happen. The rental registration, 
All we're doing here is passing this along to the tenants. The landlords are going to see this increase. Look, it had good intentions of revenue, but we're to the point now where we're just driving people out of their homes. And people are going to go rent down at Old Forge, Taylor, Music. They're not going to Thank deal you, with Mr. this. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. But these are things, as this budget stands right now, it's completely unacceptable, and this council shouldn't stand for it. You need to take a good, hard look. I want to see Mr. Courtright come in. I want to see Mr. Wexler, Mr. Gahan, all the people that are going to be piling this ship next year. Let them come in and let's hear their ideas, your ideas, because this budget can't fly as it is. Thank you. Thank you. We need to put the Thank people you. first. Our next speaker, I can't make out the name, uh, Gary Warrell? Wazel. Sorry. Couldn't tell if they were R's or S's. I'm sorry. Good evening. I hope you're ready for a change of pace. Pardon? I hope you're ready for a change of pace. I'm having problems with a, 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 a condemned home on my property. I'm here to ascertain the status of the condemned home at, at the address of 1512 Preston Place in the West Side. The property was, was reviewed by the city inspectors about three years ago and was deemed unfit for human habitation. Two years ago, the house was set on fire by juveniles. A year ago, I filed a, a formal blight complaint with the city. Despite numerous attempts for me to ascertain the status of this project via phone calls, emails, and in-person visits with Mr. Alessi and Mr. Sessizer, I was unable to get any information about the property. The house is somewhat secure, and I have seen various rodents in both, both two-leg and four-leg in the premises. I would like a solid commitment as to, as to when the situation will be taken care of. I worked with government for many years and understand the challenges of completing a project, a project like this, but I find it unacceptable that the project is now going into its fourth year. I don't know what to do. I'm here for some help. It was a little bit hard to understand oh, no. you, Mr. Wassel, no. but uh, you, you yeah. mentioned a property on Preston Place. Yeah, uh, we have a, a, a property at Preston Place, 1512 Preston Place, that I'm having is condemned. It's been condemned for like three years now, and I'm wondering what the status of it is, when it's going to be torn down. Uh, we could inquire with the Yes, yeah. we could send a request. I've reached out to OECD, and uh, nobody's given me any solid answers. I think it would be best directed to Mr. To, Seitzinger, uh, Mr. Seitzinger, um yeah. who will, will likely be out of a job in, in a month or so. So they're. <laughs> Um, with the change of administration, to some you know department heads may right. change, some may not. Um, but if if you could provide that address um, to our office, it's not filing downstairs. Great. We'll we'll, do, we'll look into it. Um, I, and I'm going to be honest with you, Mr. Seitzinger has not been forthcoming with information on this on these type of issues. I know Mr. Joyce and myself um, put a lot of time into a similar situation about a property um, in the Trip Park section of Scrant of West Grant and. Um, and we've been stonewalled as well. Um, but I if you leave the information with us, we'll definitely make sure that the right people are made aware. And if uh, the current administration is unwilling to act, we, you know, I'll be sure to bring it up with uh, our new mayor when he takes office in January. Thank you. I have another comment in regards to the budget. Has anyone ever thought about marrying mar mar together with the, with the nonprofits to see if they could provide us some talent, like, a, like, a, like an advisory committee made up of people from business? Uh, industry, trade, you know, economic departments, finance departments, and see if they come, come, come together and help us with the situation. Reach out to maybe Detroit or Compton, California, or Bridgeport, Connecticut. We're going through the same trouble. Settle with, with, with those people and see what, they, what they've done in the past. See if that would help maybe think, make a big think tank, get some fresh ideas, and see what maybe we would start, to turn the boat in another direction. Uh, that's a, a, a very good idea. Mm. Yes. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, if you could leave that address with our um, clerk, we'll, we'll be glad to look into that for you. Our next speaker tonight is Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Uh, I just Good want to say a couple words about Alexander's. Uh, I have to. Don't often disagree with Mr. Bolas, but I have to disagree with him tonight. To give them a 4.5% drop on their interest rate, I think is really unreasonable. As Mr. Laskin said, everybody's going through tough times. I'm going through tough times. I lost my full-time job in April that I had for 21 years. Nobody's dropped on my percentage, is 4.5%. So uh, they charge $30 for a haircut. I think they can pay to 5%. Their prices are outrageous. So I think they should be able to pay with what they are now. Uh, moving on to the budget. As everybody else has said, I think it's unrealistic. 56% is a lot for people to pay in property taxes. I know we do have to raise the taxes because the banks have to see that we have some income coming in or we're not going to get anything, but 
I think 30 or 40 would be more reasonable. And as other people have said, and I've said in the past, the garbage fee is illegal. We pay our property taxes for that. It, this council should look to disband, get rid of that garbage fee, because it's illegal. I wish someone would take it to court and get it thrown, because I'm sure it would get thrown out. That, that's why we pay our property taxes, for fire protection, police protection, and our garbage gets picked up. It, it, it's just, I don't know, it, it's very simple to figure that out. I don't know why we still have this, and $300 is way too much. There's a, a woman lives behind me, she's in her 80s, widowed. She puts on maybe a bag of garbage a week. She can't afford $300. I was talking to her daughter last week. She can't do it. I mean, there's a lot of people like that. I said, no, like, I, I'm, I'm working through a temp agency now. I might not be able to. You might see my name in the paper next year. It's just outrageous. The people can't pay all these fees. It, something's got to be done. Uh, moving on. On a brighter note, for the last 12 years, there's not been too much to be proud of this city. But I think there is one thing to be proud of now, and that's the West Grant product, Matt McGloin. I think he's a bright light shining from this city. He's a kid that walked on to Penn State, turned out to be a record-setting quarterback there, wasn't drafted by the NFL, which it turns out now was a big mistake. I mean, he was picked up by Oakland as a fourth stringer, and I read in the paper last week, the only reason they picked him up was just to give the other quarterbacks a rest. And now he's starting in the NFL. That's an unbelievable accomplishment. And I think every screen told you should be proud of Matt. I know his parents are smiling from ear to ear and all his whole family. And everybody should be proud of him. You know what? He's a great example for kids that aren't physically talented as some other player. Matt doesn't have the physical abilities that a lot of other quarterbacks, but he's got the heart and he's got the desire. And he's got it up here. He's got the smarts, which some guys without the, with the athletic ability don't have. So I think that's one thing to be proud of, and that's Matt McGloin. And uh, I know last year, council was supposed to bring him in and give a proclamation. I know that didn't happen. So I'm asking, this probably won't happen until a new council takes over. But I know Council Monroe, we spoke about it. If you can make a note. Yeah, absolutely. It's something I, I wanted to do in the past. It's something not only for and at the time it was just for matt's penn state yeah. um, amazing penn state career but now we could also even include um, some of the great work he's doing in the nfl now. i mean just to make an nfl team is an accomplishment there's a, thousands of players that come out of college football that don't make it and to be a starting quarterback in the nfl that's fantastic like i said it, he's doing our city proud that's one thing we could really be proud of and uh like i said it, We'll talk about it again, but after the season's over, it will be nice to get him down here. And again, I will be here for the public uh, meeting on uh, December 5th, but uh, I know you have to introduce the budget tonight, but uh, got to make some amendments to it when December 5th rolls around. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. And I just want to say that um, Matt McGloin, is definitely a role model for many, many children in this city. Um, of someone who worked hard, wasn't wasn't given a lot of chances, and went out there and and really worked hard and got it and earned his keep. And with that note, our next speaker is Andrew Porter. Good evening. My name is Andrew Porter, citizen of Scranton. A role model is a great thing. Um, I really came here uh, after uh, you know, contemplating uh, for approximately a month. Should I come? Should I not come? I'm here. I'm here because I love this city. This is God's city. I wanted to particularly thank uh, the president of your city council, uh, Janet Evans, for her service over the years. And uh, she's not here. Um, uh, I wish a speedy recovery for uh, both uh, Ms. Evans and uh, Mrs. Evans and uh, Mr. McGraw. Uh, we have a tendency sometimes to look at all bad, and we need to look at good. 
One of the things I'd like to thank uh, City Council for as a unit is for keeping the Pledge of Allegiance in the building. Sometimes we have a tendency to forget that we have made an oath to God and that all that are here are supposed to represent the citizens of this great city. This is God's city um, in accordance to the wishes of God. Now we have a responsibility, I'm very disappointed um, in the fact that there's not as many citizens here as there should be because the citizens, I think, should be out uh, every day because uh, uh, it's not over until it's over, I think that was once said, and um, we have until the end of the year to uh, raise certain funds. Now I know you're probably thinking, oh, this is ridiculous and this guy is a ridiculous person by even thinking that. But we don't have, the, we have a, 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 a month maybe to do this. Uh, we hired um, a mayor previously, um, no matter what you may think of him. Uh, he has uh, been in the capacity of mayor for over a decade. And um, we, it's our responsibility as citizens to help as much as we can and this way uh, uh, politicians uh, would be able to uh, be in line with what is required by the city. And um, what we need, I think, is to take a different type of approach. Because to borrow, to continually borrow, and to um, put God's city up for sale is, I don't think, the appropriate way to move. Now, uh, we made another decision and we brought in uh, Bill Cartwright and the, 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 uh, the citizens of, uh, of Scranton has spoken. Um, if you tax the way it is intended to be, then you take away homes of your seniors. You take away homes of the lowly, of the poor. And if you take those homes and you foreclose those homes, you need to watch what it is that you do because God does not look kindly on people who make profit of those less fortunate. I think what we need to do, if you remember correctly, we have so many people that love this city and do we, as individuals, as citizens of Scranton, do we really love this city? Because if we did, then what we need to do is we need to raise funds. We need to stop borrowing we need to, to let the world see that we're in need. We need to have Bill Clinton. We need to have his, his wife, Hillary. We need to have the Vice President of the United States come in. We need to let them know that we need help. We need to let the University of Scranton, who has a, a fine institution and some of the best students in the country here, as well as Lackawanna County, as well as the high schools, as well as the Marywood University, and others that I may not have mentioned, these people can raise funds. Your media speaks of all these different organizations that can raise funds. We need to get out here and you say that it's not possible, or you may think that it's not possible, but it is possible. With God, all things are possible. And if you take the approach that that is, then it will. And we have elected Bill Cartwright, and I'm sure his intentions are good. But we need to stay focused on the, on the matter at hand, and that is to, to, to help each other. We are angry people. Sometimes, if, if you look, uh, we, we use uh, devices like, like the cell phone, and we don't use it for good purposes in most instances. We, uh, we, we drive with the cell phone in, in one hand and, and with the cigarette in the, in the other hand, and, and, where, and, and, and where's the hand on the wheel? Uh, on a two-way street, we're crossing over into the other lane and, and, and we're running into just about scaring whoever it is that's, that's going the right way when the other people are going the wrong way. I think that we need to take a different approach. Uh, I know that my time is up. Uh, I only have minutes to speak to you, but we have as a city, as a unit, a month, and that's a long time. There are 300 and how many days in a, in a year and people are raising funds for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. And when those two days are gone, where are the people that are foreclosed out of the city? Where are they going to go? Where are they going to live? God will bless us if we do what it is that we need to do. 
And don't you think that we can do it? And that's what I say to you. I think, I think that we should try as best we can to do whatever we can to save our city. If you love your city, then you will do that. You need to come out. You need to, let, you need to help the people that you elected. And the people that are elected should never, never, even the police department and the fire department, you have taken an oath. You have taken an oath to God that you would protect the citizens of this great city. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Thank you. Our next speaker is Zazie Quinn. Good evening, Ozzie Quinn, Taxpayers Association. I think uh, I can tell you how Mr. Doherty came at that $300 increase, okay? Uh, you know, going back to July of this year, the Pell reviewed and analyzed the budget for 2014, and they said at that time there was going to be an $18 million deficit in the budget, whole in the budget, and they said in order to uh, be able to balance the budget, you're going to have to increase that 117 percent real estate taxes. Now, I see where Mr. Doherty says, and this, this, I don't think it's a coincidence, you know, he says he wants to raise the taxes 49 percent, okay, and then he wants to increase $122 on top of the $178, so it's $300 increase to the uh, garbage collection fee which would amount to 68%. Add the 68% to the 49% and you get 117%. I think Mr. Doherty has deceived us. It's a sham. What he's using is the garbage fee, garbage collection fee, to, instead of increasing his taxes, and I think a lot of the administrations, since the garbage tax had come into, gar garbage fee, excuse me, has come into uh, existence, they've been able to use that increase in the garbage fee so they wouldn't have to increase the taxes. And that way they look good in the public eye. There's no doubt about it. That 117% is what Pell had told Mr. Doherty that increase was needed, and that's what he's given them, 117%. Now, if you look at the Scranton Times, it's not having 117, it'll be a 125% increase, you know? And I think the Scranton Times is more accurate, probably. But there's no doubt about it. That fee, that garbage collection fee, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. That's a tax. There's no doubt about it. And they're using that as a front to get around so the people will pay this garbage fee and they'll look good in the eyes of the people that they haven't raised the taxes. So I think if you go back in July, you're going to see that that's what I'm speaking about is true, okay? Now, you see a lot of foreclosures in the paper, no doubt about it, hundreds and hundreds, and you see a lot of tax sales, hundreds and hundreds. Two-thirds of them are from the city of Scranton. How in the heck are you going to raise taxes that much? You know, 117%, according to Mr. Doherty, 117%, and be able to have people stay in the city. You know, 33% of the people are on Social Security. It's unbelievable. Then you talk about 30, another 35% are making less than $25,000. So you can't get uh, blood out of a stone. You know, it's, it, it's a shame it's like that, but we've been deceived ever since this administration has been on board. Not only that, we've been deceived from our administration for a long, back, long time back. You know, that garbage fee, as you know, there's no doubt about it, it was always in the taxes. You paid your taxes, you got your garbage tax. Some smart politician says, oh, let's go for a garbage collection fee, and that way we can deceive the public. And they have been doing it for years. But Mr. Doherty is really deceiving us, because he's raising us 117%. If you look at the Scranton Times, it's 125%. And I don't think it's a coincidence. Lastly, I want to say something about, you know, last year there was a federal audit on the Office of Economic and Community Development, and it was $11 million finding, and that finding was to be paid if they didn't resolve the finding by non-federal funds, meaning taxpayers' funds. 
Now, I haven't had, heard hide or hair from the OECD or anybody else or anybody about what's the status of that uh, audit. I used to have good rapport of trying to get information out of HUD. Then all of a sudden, my wires were cut. They made me uh, go through, uh, jump through hoops to try to get information. And I thought, my, it's not worth it. So I appreciate it, Mr. Rogan, you being the chairman of OECD up until January. <laughs> If you could look into that audit, because a lot of that audit findings have to do with loans. And as uh, you had a caucus tonight, uh, loans, and I'm sure you're going to see a lot of discrepancies. And I don't want to get left, and the public don't want to get left paying, even if it's not 11 million, whatever they have to pay to uh, non-federal funds. And it's liable to come out to haunt us, okay? So it might be another thing that would happen. So I want to, I appreciate being here tonight. and. You know, I just want to say one thing, you know, that's a sham, that, that fee is a sham, and there's no doubt about it, and it, it can't be used, it can't be continually used to uh, help the politicians and, and put the burden on the people and think that the people are so foolish that they won't understand what's going on. There are people out there that know what's going on, and uh, I appreciate coming in here, and thank you for everything. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dave Dobson. Right. Um, Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Uh, taxes paid, fees paid. Uh, Good evening. Once again, I'm going to Good repeat evening. myself. While we still have a majority, at least the resolution: no new tax exempts until the tax exempts form a, an association uh, with the city government to gain compensation from the state over losses, and that includes government buildings such as the county and county jails and whatever else, uh, nonprofit schools and so forth. I'm tired uh, of uh, paying everybody else's bills. And uh, once again, I'd like to note that we had a $6 million debacle with the school board. and. Please start to realize like our city is distressed. And uh, as far as the state legislature is concerned, uh, we refuse help. And once again, this is the latest information and I'm going to read it. Perhaps the most astonishing story the mainstream media has missed is how companies force consumers to pay tax dollars that never quite make it to the government's pocket. What began as an effort in Kentucky to develop a single company, to help a single company in Appalachia raise capital by keeping state income taxes withheld from its workers' paychecks has grown to more than 2,700 companies in 19 states when this book was first published. Uh, the big banks, car makers, insurers, and a host of Canadian, Chinese, European, Japanese companies all get to profit by pocketing taxes withheld from American workers' paychecks. Since the fine print came out in hardback, two more states have joined this trend, Oregon and Pennsylvania. Now, the Pennsylvania law was designed initially to benefit one company, Oracle, a foreign a firm so rich it does not need any subsidies. If this pattern continues, I am confident it will, then other firms will uh, soon join Oracle in pocketing tax dollars withhold from their employees' paychecks. Now, that pertains to us in this respect. We are made fun of by the state of Pennsylvania when we ask for help over the firemen and policemen's uh, settlement in the uh, arbitration awards. And uh, it was mentioned with uh, uh, on a per bag fee, and I will mention that I helped at the polls with Pat Rogan in the spring. He didn't need my help this fall, uh, so I supported him. But uh, I don't support per bag fees, and I don't know how that idea is going. But uh, on trash, I found 20 cardboard boxes, two by two, tied up and bundled at the trash pickup. And my advice to Scranton, and with uh, aluminum cans and bottles and so forth, wise up and complain later. Uh, 
I don't support the $300. I fully understand, uh, and Ozzy was very enlightening, but a lot of people are failing to recycle, which is free, by the way, on tipping fees. It's free of tipping fees. It just costs us for the trucks and the people to, uh, to uh, pick it up. And uh, once again, I'm going to make a golden parrot for Bill Clinton. He's not president anymore, but he's pushing trade packs and bending Obama's ear once again. And uh, poor old George Bush, with all his faults, got blamed for a lot of the uh, joblessness that uh, came from his Chinese trade packs and NAFTA. And uh, Sarah Palin, the welfare queen of the year, uh, 165 paid out to Alaska for every dollar of federal government money paid in. I'll bet you the post office would never miss Alaska. They have to fly their mail around instead of deliver it by walking there. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Christopher Schimmel. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Chris Schimmel, uh, West Grant resident, taxpayer, homeowner. Uh, my first time up at the council meeting here. Um, I'm disgusted. I, don't, I cannot believe the line is, when I seen these runners out here, I thought maybe that was the line for, to get in here tonight. I, I can't believe nobody, nobody's here with this mayor's proposal. Um, I have a couple of newspaper articles here, one from last year with the taxes that are owed to the city. I got a, you know, the recent one here, October 14th, 15 pages of, I'm sure everybody's seen this, the garbage fees that are owed. Then one here um, from November 16th, says collection of delinquent wage taxes and delinquent garbage fees are expected to rise by 450,000. What do we owe about 13 million in taxes and garbage fees combined? We're only gonna collect 450,000 out of that? That's a joke, it really is. This budget's a joke. Um, I, I have a pretty good job in the city. Um, I turn down overtime. They say if you don't vote, you don't voice your opinion, you don't get anywhere. It's my first time to council. Came down on behalf of the citizens of the city of Scranton. I'm voicing my opinion, and like I said, this is a this is a joke. I don't know how people are going to afford it. Um, you know, a lot of people on this page are my family and friends, and I don't know whose responsibility or job is to. I don't want to use the word go after, but we all got to pay our fair share. The people on these pages that owe the taxes and the garbage fee have to chip in, have to start paying a little bit. I, gotta, I don't mind paying a little bit of a tax increase, but these people can't just pay 100 bucks and think, oh, okay, I'm good for another year. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. They have to, I feel everybody else has to start chipping in. I don't know whose job it is, if it's the tax collectors or councils or the mayors, but these people have to start chipping in. I think if we collected all this money that was owed to the city, you know, I don't think we'd be in the debt we're in. I don't think we'd have to raise taxes as bad as we'd have to if all the fees were collected. Um, that's about it. I'd like to wish uh, Mr. Joyce and Mrs. Evans uh, good luck in their next ventures. They won't be with us next year, and uh, I'll be down to see the rest of you, Mr. Rogan, Mr. Laskin. Thanks. Thank you. That, conc er, uh, that concludes our sign-in sheet for tonight. Uh, would anyone else like to address council? Not really. I'd like to be home uh, doing other things, but uh, we're compelled. Uh, first of all, I'd like to note that last week, especially a, a councilman and from this podium, people have land-based at PEL. I'd like to point out that PEL has no power to do directly force compliance. Remember that PEL works for and is paid by DCED. For the year 2003 through, 2000 and, uh, through 2010, the head of DCED was an appointee of Governor Rendell. 
The same Governor Rendell who sent lots and lots of millions of dollars into this city, uh, I'm not sure what good it did, but he also managed to uh, drain the rainy day fund. And so I would uh, direct your issues to Mayor Ren uh, Governor Rendell. Uh, next, the budget. First, I'd like to thank the Times Tribune for making it available online. That was a real help. And um, I think the only, the only thing that can save many people, I think this is going to turn out unless something drastic happens, the only thing that's going to save this city uh, or many people from a, the greatest real estate land grab in the history of northeastern Pennsylvania is if they get on the phone tomorrow and talk to their representatives and their state, sen they, their state senator and tell them we need Senate Bill and House Bill 76 passed and we need it this session. If people's ta school taxes were freed and they only had to pay controllable sales taxes, then they might have the money to pay some of this increase. Uh, Mr. Flynn's number is three. Of course, all have preceded by a 570. Mr. Flynn is 342-4349. Mr. Haggerty is 342-2710. And Mr. Blake's number is 787-6481. Uh, I hope you'll make their phones ring off the hook tomorrow. Um, Next, a uh, couple of questions on the budget. So I guess, uh, Mr. Rejoice, you're, you're in it. Uh, okay. Does the court award line item in the budget that is expending, expending $22.2 million satisfy fully the Supreme Court award uh, to the fire and police? Uh, maybe you could hold and do these during motion since I'm the last one, because I'd like to get through all of them. I will uh, say, I'll, I'll I'll, I'll, I won't take up any of your time when I'm speaking, okay. so. Oh, okay. Um, yes, that, that is intended to um, uh, satisfy the whole Supreme Court award. Okay, and the assumed, what was the assumed uh, real estate tax collection in 2013 and what is assumed for 2014? As far as the collection rate? Um, I, think I it was don't 87 have. 87 or 88 last year. It's basically in the same ballpark. It's it's going to be somewhere between yep. 87 or 88, maybe 89. Well, I I don't really again gets back to the the great land grab that that's going to occur in a couple of years here, uh, unless something else drastic happens. But uh, I just think something has to be done. Uh, with respect to the meters, is the proposed lease available for review in the clerk's office and does the lease give Republic control of the hours and days of operation and placement of meters and determination of the fines? Interesting enough, um, I have never seen the proposed lease and I don't have mm -hmm. you seen a councilman? I, I could answer that. I, I spoke with Pell today. Um, okay. th there is currently no proposed lease. It's something that was talked about, um, which is a 10-year lease of, of the meters. Um, there is no legislation. There's no final deal. It will be up to the next administration and the next council whether they want to pursue that item. Pell further explains that I believe it's $1.6 million that's um, included for sale of assets is for either a deal with the meters or a deal with the sewer authority. It's 1.7 million. 1.7. Uh, yeah. I'm not to correct <laughs> but who's got, yeah. Thank you. Um, and they felt that was a safe number. It's one of the, uh, one of the concerns I have um, with the budget as well, as well as some others that I'll mention during motions. Okay, well, speaking of the sewer authority, I would like to commend them. I know I, I urged you all up there, all five of you, uh, at various times over the last couple of years to read the section of the sewer authorities last uh, presentation that was made a feasibility study of some sort that was made and presented at uh, Lackawanna College they have a section on affordability they base their fees on affordability and I doubt that any of you ever took the time to do that but I I think that's it you know it really really irritated me tonight to hear you talk to somebody, a woman who I know it was, it's totally unrelated, but 
I believe uh, the owner of Alexander's owned also the lot that's Kitty Corner next to Buona Pizza. Uh, not a very big lot. I believe they were paid somewhere in the neighbor, neighborhood of a quarter of a million or maybe even $275,000 by the Redevelopment Authority. And yet they complain. I don't think the legislation that came here had a, a grant, I believe it was for, uh, for a loan from day one. I think that smokescreen, I think maybe when they were talking, they were seeking a, a, a grant, but um, maybe I can go back and research it, although I don't know what the holiday's approaching, but I don't, I think that, plus if, would somebody who, who was concerned, may I continue for a little bit? Yes. Thank you. Um, I don't think somebody who was concerned because a grant, a so-called grant, was turned into a loan and then would open a place in 2009 if they were worried about their cash flow. If that was a 2007 through 2010, found out about it, and yet opens a new place in Wilkes-Barre, it makes no sense. I don't, I don't believe this, and I, I wish that you all would, would give the same consideration to the taxpayers that you're willing to give to um, Mr. Tarapchak is, I'm not sure That's of the correct. pronunciation, but if you would ask the taxpayers what they could afford to pay and base it on that, I mean, it just, hard economic times for the next 25 years, is that what we're really saying? Um, I just, I'll have more to say on that, but just a couple more on the budget. Uh, why uh, are two persons added to the collection department? Are there new residences that we don't know about that require two more, two more trash collectors in that department? I, I actually, and I, I don't believe I had a chance to talk to my colleagues about that yet. Um, one of the things that I'm going to propose is that one of those positions is eliminated, um, one of the additional positions, and to actually, I would like to put a supervisor in to oversee um, what's going on at DPW at a, actually at a lower pay scale than, than what we currently have. So there would be some yeah. savings and hopefully more efficiency. Well, I'd just like to know also what part of the $300 is for the repayment of the uh, abatement from last year that had to be repaid? I believe the abatement was $1.5 million to be paid over the next 36 months or three years. Um, I would like to know how many households are trash collected, residential households, what the landfill fee is, and and if that's how we're paying back that um, one point, for, well, it'd be $500,000, I guess, that half a million um, uh, abatement that was given last year. And then finally, uh, how many citation issuers are covered by the $659,786.40? in the included in the budget proposal do we know i don't know off the top of my head but i will i i, I don't well i have an idea but i don't want to okay. yeah, uh just fine. uh say out a, a number that is inaccurate so i'll i'll just i'll uh speak with republican and i will get that information okay thank you and thanks for your indulgence on the extra time thank, thank you, you. Is there anyone else that would like to address council tonight? Five this is great. Motions. Oh. Mm -hmm. Councilman Rogan, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, a few comments um, regarding the budget. Um, I, I guess we'll start with one of the, the items that was talked about a lot today, which is the garbage fee. And I have been one of the few people that have been an advocate for a per bag fee and many people have been upset with that idea. Um, this is the other option and it's not fair to people who only have one bag of garbage. Um, what I'm hopeful that can happen and I, I don't know if it can is that instead of imposing a, a $300 yearly garbage fee that it can be broken out to become a quarterly fee where residents would pay $75 um, every three months to the city to, to soften the blow on um, many people who are, who are going to struggle with this bill. Um, that's another reason why I, I, I like the per bag fee, which you were only paying 
for what you put out and it was weekly, but um, it, it didn't seem that there was uh, any support with the current administration for that idea. So I think that's something that, that we definitely have to look at to soften the blow on, um, on the garbage fee. Um, looking through, there are, I do have some amendments that I, I want to make, and there, some of them are smaller things, just different changes and um, in some of the departments. Um, one of the items um, I would, I'm working on hopefully including in, which would generate a little bit more revenue, but it, it would be put to contingency, is the lease of um, city lands for cell phone towers. Um, we had an individual that came to council, I believe it was three weeks ago, regarding that, and I have been in touch with him um, quite a lot over the last, um, last couple of weeks. And he is going to provide me with some numbers and uh, some projections on that. So that's something I, I think that we could do to beef up our contingency fund, um, at least a small amount, and bring in some additional revenue without increasing taxes. Um, I, I do have um, a couple concerns on some of the revenue items. Um, and one of them was mentioned already, which is the sale of assets. Um, I, I've stated before that the, the, the sale of the parking meters isn't something that, that's financially wise because we're, we could sell the meters, get a, a one-time cash infusion, but then we lose that revenue forever under, under that kind of agreement. So that's something I, I, I would be opposed to, and it does concern me that money is budgeted for that item when there may not be the support of the current, of the, of the new mayor and the new city council to actually go through with that, that item. And I also wonder if, if that did happen, if we would lose control of the rates. Um, the worst thing that could happen is if we sold the meters and a private company decided to charge $5 an hour to park at a meter in the downtown. Um, that would hurt the businesses as well. Um, I, I notice, and, and this ties into two state issues, actually, I want to talk about a little bit. Um, one that Ms. Schumacher brought out and another one that wasn't brought up. Um, there is additional money in this year's budget that would, was projected assistance from the state for liquid fuels. Mm -hmm. Now, I may be wrong, but I am almost positive that the transportation bill that just passed does not include that increased money for distressed municipalities. Um, if that's the case, the city would not be receiving this money. Now that bill unfortunately just passed, and I'm sure many of you have read about it, not only does it hurt the city of Scranton on this issue, but it also will increase your tax at the gasoline pumps by 28 cents. Now, I, I'd like to thank our, our two state representatives in the, in the city, Marty Flynn and Kevin Haggerty, for voting against it. Unfortunately, our state senator, once again, um, left the city out in the cold. And moving on to the other state issue that was brought up that would really help taxpayers in the city, which is Senate Bill 76. Um, I've spoken about this at council many times. Um, I spoke to one of the, the directors over the last week of the organizers that's really trying to push the state legislator, the state house and state senate to pass this bill. Um, and what it would do is it would eliminate the school portion of your property taxes, which is by far the largest portion. If that bill were to pass, even with tax increases coming from the city and possibly the county, your tax bill on property would be less. Um, I know I spoke, I know um, State Representative Flynn supports the bill. I believe State Representative Haggerty is opposed to it, and I know Senator Blake, once again, is staunchly opposed to it. Um, it seems to be a pattern with Senator Blake that anything that supports, that helps the city of Scranton, he's against. And it's, it's very disappointing that um, our state senator hasn't done a thing to help the city. Um, and, and to make matters worse, he was one of the, the guys at DCED when all of this started under Rendell's administration and, and, and previous to that that really brought the city into the position we're in. Um, I don't want to talk about state issues all night week, but I, I, I did speak with representatives from Pell. Um, they provided me with quite a lot of reading material <laughs> for over the weekend to look at um, regarding the budget, regarding some other ideas, and I'm hopeful that you know my colleagues, myself, we could look through these, see 
if this budget is going to work. And that is the most important thing on a budget vote, if it's going to work. Um, last year, there were a lot of things put in the budget that didn't materialize. And we're paying for those now. And, and I hate to say it, I finally agree with the Scranton, one of us, the Scranton Times headlines over the last week that said, it's time for Doherty to pay the piper. And this budget is a result of a, over a decade of mismanagement, fighting city unions instead of sitting down at a table like this one and making a deal, borrowing money to build a tree house and a dog park. They're nice things, but now we're paying for it. And uh, Mr. Joyce will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe our debt service this year is in excess of, was it in excess of $14 million? Well, um, you mean for 2014? Yes. In, in this budget? Yes, you're, you're accurate. Uh, the debt service uh, this year, uh, so, sorry, I'm no, that's fine. Was, was less because of uh, a, a, a refinance, but. Yeah. And, and, and when you're, you're looking at a budget and you think of a four, just the $14 million, which is a very large percentage of the budget, you're receiving no services for that money. It's only going to pay the banks for the mistakes of the past. You're paying for that dog park that Mayor Doherty built it was, at the time was the most expensive dog park in the country. You're paying for that tree house. You're paying for all this waste in the past and because in the past elected officials didn't use correct numbers or didn't pursue other revenue ideas, pursuing the nonprofits, pursuing enhancements of our parking meters. All of these things have come home to roost and the line of credit is, is due. We, we have to pay this debt service. And on top of the city's debt service, we also have parking authority obligations that need to be dealt with. And it seems that they are only going to grow. I know there are reports that the garages are in disrepair, the occupancy rates are very low, and they're losing money year in and year out. The city needs to get out of the parking business, sell the garages, and be done with it. We're going to have to pay the debt regardless, but if we could pay it at an accelerated schedule, um, we'll be saving a, a ton of money in interest. I believe when Attorney Hughes did a presentation on this issue, the city owes $50 million in principal on the parking garages, but if we go out through the payment schedule, we'll be paying a hundred, nearly $100 million. So we could save a, a, a nice chunk of money by selling some of these garages that we're taking a loss on, paying down the debt a little bit sooner, and we're still gonna be saddled with the remaining debt because the assets are worth less than the debts. But because of the way this borrowing was written, the city backed it, and previous councils supported it. We built garages when we didn't have to, so that's another part on the expenditure side that you're not receiving any service for that money. As far as police and fire go, um, in this budget, there are no cuts to police and fire as far as Manning goes per the contracts. And I know the newspaper and many have, have tried to put the blame on the police unions and the fire unions, but these are court awards. These salaries are, are due to a court award. We could have negotiated a much better deal, and not us, that the administration, council doesn't have the power to negotiate contracts, but much better deals could have been negotiated if the administration the current administration would have sat down with these guys and worked something out. And we wouldn't be looking to borrow in excess of $20 million to pay off this debt. And we wouldn't be in the scenario where the salaries are what they are. And council had, and the mayor really had nothing to do with that. It was all settled in the courts. We need to have the elected officials, the citizens, and our employees involved in decision making, not attorneys and judges. I hate to be on a little bit of a rant, but these are the issues of why we're here. And, and we need to, as a city and as a residency, understand this so these same mistakes aren't made again. But I will be continuing to, to review the budget, work with my colleagues, look for some changes that can be made. Um, I know there are some, like I said, some smaller things. I know myself and Mr. Loscom talked about a couple of them, and, and Mr. Joyce and I as well, um, that can be made to help the city run more efficiently. Um, with what we have because the manpower has decreased over the years and 
people always say they don't mind paying the taxes as long as they're getting their services for it. And we have to look to do more with less. And, and that's what we have to do when looking through at, at these positions and, and different ideas to run these departments better. So that is all I have for tonight. Um, I do have two citizens requests. Um, one is regarding a street light that is out. I do have the poll number I'll give to you after the meeting, Mrs. Craig. Um, that's on West Mountain and also some potholes on West Mountain as well. I'll get both of those to you after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rogan. Councilman Loscom, do you have any comments or motions? Yeah, thank you. Just a few brief things. And uh, as Mr. Rogan said, we are actively looking at the budget. I won't belabor it this evening. There, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, line by line that, that we're looking at to benefit the residents and, and offset any large tax increase. Um, I don't think I'm going to kid anybody and say there won't be a tax increase. I mean, it, it's inevitable based on, on our situation. But uh, there are some things, and, and over the past few years, there have been some ways to, to generate revenue that were totally ignored or wait, waited until the last minute, and we've gotten deeper and deeper. But I hope uh, the new administration is more proactive on, on going after revenue that's laying out there without coming out of every taxpayer's pocket. And I'm looking forward to that. But um, next, with the agreement of my colleagues, I would like to direct Mrs. Crake to send a letter of support um, to seek funding for the West Grant and Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch as they're looking for a local share account grant from Monroe County Gaming Funds uh, to help with the renovations of the West Side Community Youth Center. Um, if I have the agreement of my colleagues, I would like to have Mrs. Craig send that. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, just lastly, I know that uh, I mean, we've complained a lot about new streets blacktopped and being cut up and all that, but there are some projects going around through the city. And I happen to witness one over in Westside, where they've gone three blocks. Last week, I guess it was, they sliced the road with the saw all the way up uh, both sides. I believe it's TSE Construction has the project. Um, the problem is, they do that and they leave. I don't know if it's in the agreement or whatever, these companies have to clean the street after. There's so much dust in those neighborhoods for days after that uh, it's just making a mess. And, and there should be some type of street sweeper that I believe these companies own and maintain to, uh, to do it. If not, then we should have our own street sweepers out there, but, but it, it's a nightmare. And now they're actually digging the street. And again, after they do that, they should clean up after themselves too. Uh, it's the least we can ask for the, uh, the amount of projects. But I would like to see down the road that uh, we have some community meetings throughout the city on what's going on, the status of our, our uh, utility projects in the city. So, so the residents know and they can know what to expect in their neighborhoods as far as the sewers, the water, the gas, the paving. I mean, there seems to be very little coordination, traffic coordination and stuff. But if, if we let the neighborhoods know, um, I believe yesterday, the, the, in this particular case, they put cones up on both sides of the streets and told the neighbors they had to be part, off the street between 6 and 7 o'clock. I mean, it, it's, you know, if they knew a week ago, it would be easier. Last minute notices don't work. But we have to be more amenable to the public. In the end, the projects are going to be worthwhile, but we can work to minimize the inconvenience to everyone that's involved on that. And, it, it, you know, if you can, Mrs. Craig, if you could send a letter to the utility company uh, and also the contractor that, uh, you know, I believe it's their duty to, to follow with the street sweeper once they make these cuts and, and whatever. Um, and lastly, my buddy Chris asked me to, uh, to make sure. He's a little shy tonight, I think. He's taking it easy. <laughs> but uh, if we can uh, notify the DPW and ask them about leave pickups. I've noticed a lot of people have put leaves in the curbs. And uh, 
and there's quite a few leaves down now, they're going to be blocking our sewers. If they have any plans to, to pick up the leaves in the city and if they can notify us or put, put notice in the newspaper so the public would know, so Chris doesn't burn them. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Chris. And uh, I believe that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Loscom. <clears throat> well, um, you know, it's really tough to look at the budget and see what it's come to. 56% uh, tax increase, 69% garbage fee increase, increased rental registration, parking meters. <clears throat> One thing, though, that I do know is the city is definitely um, revenue strapped. And what's very scary is looking at the future and what it holds. Because one thing that will be a part of 2015 that isn't in this budget is the payment for the borrowing to pay off the Supreme Court award for the police and fire unions, plus an extra increase of $5 million or so to the MMO, which will go from 10 to $15 million. So, uh, you know, it's it's just it's very unfortunate it's very unfortunate for people because in the end it's the average guy out there who ends up paying the bill and you know uh, councilman rogan said something about senate bill 76 and i and i really thought that was a good idea too and i thought that it was uh, something that would really help out people as far as lowering um, or, or eliminating school property taxes. But as I said two uh, weeks ago, um, one of my biggest frustrations um, when I came on to council as a new councilman, especially the finance chair, was being handed a budget that I had no say in or uh, that that I had, that I basically had no voice to even have any control of it. And of course, uh, you know, we were, uh, as, as a council, we made amendments to that budget and went to court and ended up losing. And it was ruled that only the mayor could open or reopen the budget in uh, mid-year. That's why, um, I won't make any amendments to this budget. I won't propose any amendments to this budget. I will vote either no or yes based on any other amendments that are proposed. I'm more than willing to work with any of my colleagues to talk about ideas that could bring in revenue. As far as uh, some of our newly elected officials, I'm more than willing to work with them too. Um, I, I uh, did place a call out to uh, our um, incoming mayor, Bill Courtright, uh, to congratulate him and uh, ask him to give me a call if he wants to discuss anything with uh, the budget, um, any ideas, because I know that, you know, he had mentioned during uh, his campaign that, you know, he had uh, spoken to, to a lot of union members and they had mentioned that there were um, ideas that they had that could save the city money. So I, I, I think I, I would really like to hear those ideas, and I'm sure some of my colleagues would too. So um, I'll continue to uh, work with my colleagues, and uh, as far as the budget's concerned, I will vote either um, yes or no based on any amendments that are proposed. And that's all I have to say for tonight. 5B, appropriating funds for the expenses of the city government for the period commencing on the first day of January 2014 to and including December 31st, 2014 by the adoption of the general city operating budget for the year 2014. 
<clears throat> Sorry for the little time delay there. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, appointment of Paul D'Antona, 333 North Sumner Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority to fill the unexpired term of Thomas Smith, whose term is scheduled to expire June 17, 2016. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of council number 54, 2013, in ordinance, transferring the funds from fund 02 special city account which funds and account listed below are no longer needed for the conduct of city business and abolishing and closing said account. The funds remaining in this account shall be transferred to the city's general fund. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, for adoption, file of council number 53, 2013, amending file of council number 77, 2012, an ordinance entitled General City Operating Budget 2013 by transferring $410,000 from account number 01401-1309-4299 non-departmental operating expenses contingency to account number 01401-153194299 non-departmental expenses dash operating transfer debt service dash Scranton Parking Authority to provide funding for the Scranton Parking Authority debt payment due December 1st, 2013. What is the rec... <laughs> As the chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Just very briefly, th and this is exactly what I was speaking about um, when I spoke under motions regarding the city funding parking authority obligations. This is not the first time that the city has had to transfer money to the parking authority. This time, $410,000. We, we've done it a few times before and again this is another one of those things where taxpayer dollars are, are being spent and the taxpayers aren't receiving any services for them so I hope that in the future we could reform what we're doing get out of the parking garage business and and pay off pay off these debt obligations anyone else on the question roll call please Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lasky? Yes. Mr. Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety, for adoption, resolution number 46, 2013, amending resolution number 19, 2013, a resolution entitled Authorizing the City of Scranton to make application to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for traffic signal approval for the temporary traffic signal at the intersection of Cedar Avenue, State Route 3023, Scranton Expressway Ramp, State Route 8025, and Orchard Street to remain as a permanent traffic signal to include language authorizing the director of the Department of Public Works to sign the application submitted on behalf of the city of Scranton. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Rowan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no other business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn.
Motion, Motion to adjourn. adjourn. It's meeting.